Yes, today I will be giving you five different things you need to look for when purchasing a, por a Porsche Cayenne. Before getting into this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel because I will 100% be putting out more Porsche content, maybe some BMW content because the BMW videos always did good on this channel. Maybe I'll get another Z, who knows, but subscribe, like the video, let's get to it. This is my 2006 Porsche Cayenne S, which is the 4.5 V8, I believe. I'm, I may be wrong, 4 point something V8, but it is a great car. It has 242,000 miles on it, super reliable. Haven't had a single issue, literally zero issues with this car. But unfortunately, there are people out there that have had very bad issues down to you. motor failure, coolant leaks, you name it, it has happened to these cars. Now we're in year 2023. This is a 2006 car. The car debuted in 2003. So essentially, this is a 20 year old platform, 20 year old technology, 20 year old everything. And of course, with a 20 year old car, it's going to have 20 year old issues or maybe one year old issues. But that's the beauty of buying a German car and an older German car at that. So before we start going through all the issues related to this car, I wanna say these cars are great to own. They're great to drive. They are super fun. They handle better than a ton of sports cars from this year and even newer sports cars as well. Now starting with issue number one on these cars, it's under the hood. So these cars have a well-known coolant leak issue but unfortunately the coolant pipes are under these intake runners. So getting to them is not an easy task at all. Now what makes this problematic is the coolant pipes that are running underneath the intake runners, they're plastic. So it seems reasonable, it seems cost effective, but with heat, cooling, and cold temperatures, those plastics are bound to crack and they will happen. Luckily for this specific car, it was already done. The dealer has done it already before I even purchased it. So that's one less thing on my end that I have to worry about with this car. Now, if you're thinking of buying one, there are companies that sell metal coolant pipes that run along these intake runners. So that can be a permanent solution for you as well. But if you wanna keep the OEM, you can also do the plastic, which it's not really recommended. It's cost effective, but going with the metal coolant pipes underneath the runners would be the best option. Unfortunately, that is not all it is with the coolant leaks. So there also is a water pump issue that has to do with the coolant leaks as well. This is not really number two, but it is somewhat on the same topic as number one when it comes to coolant leaks. Just like most cars, water pumps eventually go out some sooner than later, but this one, it's common, very common for water pumps on these to go bad. Staying under the hood, valve cover gaskets, they're gonna go. This one has that issue currently. It's not leaking oil, but when it did come down to changing my spark plugs, there were some oil on the spark plugs themselves. I personally haven't got around to changing them. I planned on going and getting it done because I don't feel like dealing with all these pipes and it's a big motor, it's a huge V8. I don't wanna deal with all the, I don't wanna deal with like a bunch of minuscule things and things going missing, bolts going missing, hoses breaking, things like that. So I'd rather take it to a Porsche professional having it done and me not having to deal with it. However, when I did get this car, it was leaking a little bit of oil and I only assumed it was from the valve cover gasket. But um, when I changed the oil from 530 to the oil that was recommended by other Cayenne owners, the leaking just randomly stopped. So I'm not sure if that was a valve cover issue or just a, um, just a case of too thin oil because 5W30 is very thin oil compared to like 1040, 10 0, something like that. So valve cover gaskets, it's gonna happen. This car is having it happen and I still haven't changed it. So that's number two. Number three would be the tire wear problem. So these are bigger tires. These are 275, 65. So it is the max tire you can run on stock suspension and i haven't had any tire wearing issues whatsoever i guess on the outside you can say but a lot of people 
have complained about tire wears with the factory tires. I personally have not had an issue. So I don't think it's that big of an issue, but it is a common issue with these cars. So number three, tire wear issues. Now, number four is something I knew about prior to buying this car and being interested in it, but I didn't think it would actually happen to me. So number four is gonna be electrical issues. Now, let me show you what I mean. All right, so we start the car normally, put it in neutral, okay? Hey, and with the Linux 50 wow, put it in neutral and everything seems fine. We have an airbag fault. We have a bunch of headlight faults, but the headlights actually work. And a big thing right here is this controls the diff. So you can put it in mountain mode, um, low range, and then street. If I push down like this, it's supposed to light up or turn red. See like that? And then we get the all-wheel drive thing, but there's a four-wheel drive system fault. So I'm not sure what that could be. I changed the battery as people suggested. The battery didn't fix it. So I'm thinking it's probably because I use too small of a battery compared to the battery that is actually recommended or the OEM battery. So number four is gonna be electrical issues with the Porsche Cayenne. And lastly, number five, the trans freaking mission. The transmission on these cars are so bad. They're so lethargic. They feel super slow. Even when you're getting on it, the shifts are super freaking slow. I know it's not a sports car. It handles like a sports car. It has the sports car name. It's a Porsche, but the transmission is so bad. Eventually, the transmission is going to go on you. This is also something I knew with the Porsche, but once again, didn't think it would happen to me. And luckily it has not. This car has 242,000 miles on it. I drove it from California here, zero issues. By here, I mean, I'm in North Carolina. So I drove it across the country. I literally drove this thing, what is like 2,230 miles, something like that. And I had zero issues, no overheating, no like, weird electrical issues, nothing I had to stop for, nothing that made me worried. It's a great car, but the transmission is really something that lacks with this car. When I say lack, I don't mean like it's like really slow. I mean, it's, yeah, it's slow, but it will end up giving you problems. And I'm not sure if the current owner did anything with the transmission since I don't have any issues with this specific car, but Eventually the transmission is gonna go and I'm praying that it doesn't happen to this because I gotta take this back to California and you know I need it I need it to work. So guys, those are my five things to look for when buying one of these cars. They're honestly they're great cars. I've been looking for a Porsche for about three years now. I initially went for a 911, couldn't get the 911. I went for a Cayman. The lady I went to go buy the Cayman for, she wanted an extra 5K on top. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm giving up. But then I moved to California. I got three dogs and I decided, you know what? I wanna go places in the desert with my boys. And so I picked up this Cayenne. The Cayenne's a great car. I love this car. Overall, these issues don't really bother me because I work on my cars. I've had BMWs, I've had Audis, I've had Hondas, Nissans, whatever. If I watch a video and figure it out, I can pretty much fix it. So. Like I said, it's uh, honestly, it's a great car. If you want to buy one, they're about 6,000, 10,000, 4,000, even cheaper. You just got to make sure all the maintenance records are there. Everything was done. Or if you work on your cars yourself, like I do, you don't have to worry about that. You can just go pick one up. So like I said, they're honestly great cars. And if this video helps you out in any way, shape or form, be sure to drop a comment. Let me know what you thought about it. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Cause like I said, more Porsche content will be coming, more car content will be coming, and I'm honestly thinking about picking up another BMW or even another 350Z. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.